all right let me see if I can there we go we're moving on to 4k uh, some guys use 3k some guys use 5k coming off a bevel set uh, either one of those will get you there I have a Norton 4k I have a Nano 3k or not a Nano a Suhiro 3k uh, just depends on what I want right now I'm going with my Norton and we have retape the spine fresh tape and we're going to start honing on this Norton 4k and we'll do just like for the first couple sets of 40 I'll do just like I did on this The bevel set. All right, that's two sets of 40. That's just something I do. I use no pressure whatsoever. There's a lot of swarf on that. Uh, you, you can see, uh, I just rinse it off. I like my stone to be clean. I want to look at this the loop so hold on I know it's off camera but bear with me it's looking lovely already and I just there's a another thing you can do you've probably seen many honing videos where it's done instead of like that you can take I like to take and put my thumb here and my thumb here on the heel and the toe no pressure That's something that you can do when you're first starting out or whenever. I still use it sometimes. And you know that you're edge is sitting flat to that home and sometimes say that uh, hang on Because remember, I'm doing sets of 40. There's 20. Not to, not as an indication of whether I'm done honing 
just as a way to uh, a, 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 a uh, self imposed time limit that I want to check the edge at. It has nothing to do with whether the razor is done or yet, not except that that's just a, 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 a random amount of strokes I've determined to hone on before I check an edge. But say that uh, that I wasn't getting a really good hone on the edge, on the heel or the toe. Say that uh, when I looked through the glass, everything was really shiny, but it was kind of dull here or it was kind of dull there. With this stroke that I'm showing you, I can put just a little bit more pressure in a spot that's not quite honing well with my thumb or my finger. And you can do that here. You can go put your both thumbs here and it, just lay your fingers along the edge of the spine there and put pressure on this end. You could, uh, and that's part of honing is understanding that, especially if you get a blade, a vintage blade, you bought one. At an, an antique store or a, or a flea market, a thrift store, off eBay, and uh, and it's got. A bit of funkiness to it, but it's not enough that that you really need to mess with. You can use a little bit of pressure. It's not enough that you have to regrind the spine or something like that. You can use just a, a bit of pressure. Now, mind you, you need to if you go that route, you're going to have to use that type of pressure. throughout the honing process on every stone that's just beautiful uh, in order to get the kind of edge that you want on the blade, period. So, that's the deal. But it's easily done with this kind of stroke. And, uh, you can do that quite easily. Just remember the bulk of your honing It's going to be done on stones that are, I would say, maybe 5K and under. I'm on a 4K now. This is like a mid-range tone. But keep in mind also that the major part of this was done on the bevel setter. 
And sometimes what I'll do is I'll turn that around. Get a hair there. That is probably going to be it. Uh, I know that people, oh, you're going to wear your razor out doing excessive work on a stone. Well, that's part of the reason I have the tape is to help with spine wear. Wow, I just smacked the stone with this razor. And so let me look. Ah, uh, that's part of the reason I have the table. It does not hurt. It's beautiful. It does not hurt to spend a bit of extra time on the 1K and the mid-range stone, whether it's a 3K, 5K, 4K, whatever you want to call it. You know, the general or standard operating procedure, the way that most people will say, hey, uh, you hone on, you set the bevel on the 1K and then you go through, I give this advice all the time. You go through the progressions, making sure that you remove all the scratches from previous uh, stones. Once you see all those scratches removed, you move up. It doesn't hurt on the 1K and whatever mid-range stone that you're using to spend an extra bit of time there past that. Not You don't need much, 20 strokes, 40 strokes, whatever floats your boat, but just a little bit more. Before you move on to the really polishing stones like the 8K and your finisher, uh, it doesn't hurt to do that uh, as long as you're not using a lot of pressure or you shouldn't really be using any. Just enough to hold the stone, the razor on the stone. But I mean, uh, I don't want it getting dry. Uh, there is nothing wrong with that. Uh, for beginners, that's probably good because. It helps you make sure you got it right. These are just my opinions. I know, like I said, some guys will say, well, you're putting excessive wear on the razor. Eh. It, once you set a bevel and you get that bevel set well and you hone the blade out and you polish it and you get it through the finishing stages and it's shaving, the only thing you really need to do, unless you damage the bevel somehow, is go back to that finisher every now and then just to polished it up a little bit more to uh, uh, what they call refresh the edge. Uh, you don't have to go ever go back to the lower grit stones if you don't want to, as long as you don't let the thing go into a butter knife before you will try to refresh it. So, in my opinion, spending some time, extra time here, is not going to be detrimental to, at all to uh, your razor. So, all right, uh, this is good. I'm going to move on to an 8K stone. I will see you then. Bless you.